Um, oh. Uh, when, when I talked about multi-site uh, in spring this year in Prague, um, someone asked it after my talk, uh, why should I care about multi-site when I don't use it? And that's really an interesting question and that's what I want to use uh, today because my answer was uh, it makes you a better developer. developer. Um, one part is, of course, uh, you don't have as much support if you make your code uh, multi-site compatible from the start. But uh, you can learn a lot uh, by writing code that is uh, multi-site compatible. We all know single-site, pretty boring, block, and uh, some users in uh, multi-site we have still one user table, but multiple blocks and a network administration screen or multiple networks. Um, in each case, we have uh, one database with uh, um, one user table. Uh, mode rewrite is required, so you can in your code uh, rely on uh, pretty permalinks. They don't always work. I will come to that back later. And uh, on the front end, uh, you can set it up as uh, sub-sites sub or sub-directories or subdomains, or you can use entire different uh, domains for each site in a multi-site. So what we have here, the, the shops could each use uh, a completely separate domain. And that wouldn't need any changes to your code. In general, I uh, make a difference between passive and active multi-site code. Passive means your code doesn't break when it runs in multi-site. <coughs> this is especially important for uh, themes. For example, some themes uh, still register uh, custom post types or custom taxonomies. This will break in a multi-site. Um, and for plugins, it's important when we use uh, cust custom tables or um, yeah, partially auch, uh, uh, also uh, custom post types. It depends how they are set up. What we can learn as uh, developers, <coughs> I will um, cover just uh, three points in my talk. Uh, the one is uh, scope and context. In multi-site context is uh, everything because um, it changes the behavior of your code and um, context switching is quite common and it can break uh, things that just work in a single site. This can really badly break in a multi-site. Predictability is a quality of code that's often underrated in my opinion and a poor predictability in, in code. So can really slow you down uh, in, in maintenance and writing new code. And the last point is, of course, performance. Uh, performance is everything, but um, in multi-site there are some, some problems that you don't expect. Come on. Yeah, scope and context. Uh, all code always runs in the context of one site in a network. So maybe in, in, in the context of the main site or a sub-site, each site has a site ID. And for example, when you run a WP insert post, it will autom automatically uh, be ins inserted in this site's database tables. Uh, then there's the context of the network administration screen. Um, 
ähm, wer, wer die, die API for, for adding uh, custom content, like uh, what we have for the single site, the settings API, this often breaks in, in the network administration, so you have to write uh, a lot of a lot more uh, custom code. And context switching happens usually uh, per uh, switch to block. And here we see the first problem with the uh, predictability in WordPress uh, 3.0.0. Um, Multisite was in, introduced, that was uh, earlier a um, separate project. And in that earlier project, WPMU, um, each site was called a block. Then uh, WordPress just has, uh, firstly, just has taken this uh, terminology. Nowadays, it's uh, always a site. And you, you have ju just have to learn, you, you can't, can't tell that in advance. When something is called a block or a site, it's usually the same thing, it's used as a synonym, but even new code uh, sometimes is still using block instead of site. This is, um, this is uh, hard to learn, you just have to look up the code every time until you know this. Uh, theme code always runs in a pure site co uh, context. So a theme is only active per site, never per network. Plugins can be activated either as uh, site plugins, like in the common multi-site, or as network plugins, then they will run on every site. And uh, custom post types or taxonomies uh, in, a, in a network plugin are available on every site, while um, when, when this plugin is active in one site only, uh, the other sites won't know anything about these post types. Uh, this makes, for example, uh, um, tr translation impossible. If, if a custom post type is uh, active only in site one and uh, site two should hold translation for, th for the site one and the custom post type is not available, you can translate it. Mm. Yeah, network plugins. Uh, we have um, a special header in, in the plugin header, network true. Uh, it has to be written in lowercase. There is no false. You cannot uh, prevent network activation just by a header. You have to re uh, register an activation hook and disable the plugin in your custom code if you don't uh, want it in, in a network to be active. Um, and your site context uh, yeah, can change any time. For example, uh, in multilingual press, we, uh, when, when we translate a post, uh, the user enters, enters text, enters uh, the translation, he gets uh, um, editors for, for every site. Uh, so each site is for, stands for one language. Uh, the user enters the translation all in on screen, and when he saves the post, we will in the background switch the context and go to each site that is connected and uh, call WP, uh, WP update, update post again and again and again. So when your plugin just uh, listens on, on the hook save post and doesn't look at the context, it will write the, its, its own metadata again and again in the same field but in every site. This was, for example, a problem in uh, the Yoast uh, WP SEO plugin. But whenever uh, the user entered a custom description and the switched the site in the background, the, the, the description from one language was inserted in every single site. And that's 
of course not what the, what the user wants. And uh, the, the other data, what he entered earlier in, in the other site, was lost. And data loss for users is not a good thing. So uh, always check is multi-site and uh, MS is switched. I don't have this here in my examples. Uh, what, what we've done in multilingual press, we, we can't file uh, issues in every other plugins. There are too many. Um, we just clean up the uh, empty the global post array, switch to the uh, to the other sites, and when we are done, we reset uh, the post array, just so the, uh, the other plugins can't uh, misuse the existing <coughs> data. That's a really dirty workaround and. I'm not quite happy with it, but that's, that was the only solution. In your own code, always check the context before you write data. Um, database tables are either per site or per network. For the, uh, for the network uh, database tables, use a W. Uh, PDB uh, base, base prefix and uh, file storage is also <laughs> a thing you should always, if you write files to, to, uh, to uncommon places, uh, include the site ID to keep things separate and to uh, prevent overwriting um, existing data. Yeah, admin pointers, this is uh, more an UI issue. If you uh, had, had an update to your plugin and you uh, want to set a show what, what's new, don't do it on every site. Uh, store the, the, that the user has seen it in a user meta and show it only once. I had this, um, and they, I think you fixed that, all right? With in, in, in W. With flashing for right rows? No, the admin pointers. It, it, this was also in, in used uh, WP SEO. Uh, it uh, showed the, the admin post, uh, pointers for, for new sites on every site. And when I tested uh, multilingual press for compatibility, and uh, when I did that, I set up something like 15 or 100 sites per network and sometimes click it in multiple sites and I, <laughs> I've got the same pointers again and again. Uh, that's not, not a good thing. Uh, so check if, even if you have uh, custom UI events that are um, active on a single site only, check what happens when you have a multi-site and visit multiple uh, Admin, admin screens in, in a multi, multi site. Yeah, switch to block. This is uh, basically the most important uh, function. It, it changes, it says it changes the context. For example, the database prefix, it uh, sets, sets up the uh, user roles. A user can have different rules per site in a network. So in one side, you might, might be a, an editor, in, in another, just a contributor. You, before you call it, you have uh, to verify the site ID or you get really hard to debug uh, database errors. But it doesn't, it doesn't load um, uh, new translations for the site. So when every site has a different language, you still get everything, uh, for example, uh, permalinks in, in uh, translated from the first site, in, in the language of the first site. Um, the problem here is that the language files are um, stored in, in WordPress in a global variable. And the same is true for permalinks. And this can't be changed easily. This is, um, yeah, this is something what, what we can learn as, as developers. 
don't use global variables at all. Never. This is impossible to test and uh, it, makes, it makes so many problems. I have uh, in, in some cases written my, my own code to avoid switch to block because it, it, does, it does so many things uh, you, uh, or it does so many things not that you, that you need in normal cases. You can uh, look at the code in Matilingua Press how, how much code I needed, I think somehow something around 400 lines or so just to get proper uh, permalinks for categories because the, the name category is uh, translated in, in different uh, languages and just to get these, these, these uh, different prefixes and translations it's uh, really terrible. So in your own code don't make the life hard for other developers avoid global variables. Yeah, predictability, I said it already, we have sites, we have blocks, we have network. In some cases in WordPress site means a network, in some cases it, needs, it means that what we call site today. The global variables, variables like uh, the current site ID, um, yeah, everything, every variable that is global can be overwritten by anyone and whatever can happen will happen. So you can't really rely on the site ID. I have written a code on WordPress Stack Exchange that shows how to verify but it uh, needs a separate database request so you can look up the database and check if the site ID actually is valid. Uh, but in general you can't rely on, on, on most of these global variables and that's a problem you can't completely solve in your own code. You just have to be aware of it and sooner or later uh, there will be support issues where users run into, into problems because other code has uh, overwritten these variables. Then, then we have uh, WP get sites. This is, you get a list of all sites except uh, WordPress says this is a large network. A large network <coughs> is a network with more than 10,000 sites or users. You can change this value. This, is, uh, this limit word was uh, introduced for uh, performance reasons. So that, you, that, that your site not uh, dies in a memory error. Um, <coughs> but that makes uh, WP get sites not really useful because uh, you have cases where adding one site to a network can change the entire return uh, value of, of WP get sites from an area of all sites to an empty array. And when you are in a multi site and WP get sites returns an empty array, you know something is really broken because in the network you have always at least one site, the main site. And if you even don't get that, uh, you know your practically in hell because <laughs> you, you, you can solve that. You don't know, you could try to increase uh, the value for, your, for, for uh, WP uh, is large network. That's uh, risky because that means you could, yeah, you could, you could run into memory issues. There's uh, no good way around it. You just have to be aware of, of this problem that you don't always get uh, real data. You, you, can't, you can't say, uh, no matter how often I call the same code, I get the same uh, return value. That's just <coughs> not true. Um, yeah, WP get site is not even cached. Um, that's counter somehow the performance argument. Uh, if you need this function in your own code, uh, please cache it. It's expensive. Switch to block uh, the user rules. 
they are not cached, cache it if you need it. Do what WordPress doesn't because that's expensive. That was one of the reasons uh, why I wrote my own code for switch to blog because uh, in a site with many users this will slow down your code very, very uh, fast. <laughs> yeah, in, and in general switch to blog is very slow. Um, don't call it too often. So if you need data from other sites, uh, just find out what you need and then run runs through all sites, not do it uh, three times or something like, like this. Yeah, here, here's an, an, um, an alternative, a, a simple uh, alternative to, to, to the um, common switch to block. In, 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 in most code, also in, in WordPress core code, you will find after each switch to block, restore current block, then switch to block next ID, restore current block is de facto another call to switch to block. It is really slow, avoid it. Uh, you have to touch the global variables directly if you want it a little bit faster. That's of course um, risky too because they might be renamed somehow or if you switch to another block, there might suddenly code active that touches these global variables. This is why I say don't use global variables at all. Um, yeah, you have to be aware of it. And that's where I stop. <laughs> I try to keep it short because your questions are more important. <coughs> Thank you for your patience. Any questions? All clear? Who of you is uh, running a multi site currently? Oh, quite a lot. Any, have you had any uh, problems, compatibility problems with plugins or themes? Yeah, what? Mm. That you can uh, post your uh, put your own sidebars in by um, um, exchanging the normal sidebar with your own. Mm. So this doesn't run on multi sites because I think it's a problem. I don't know with globals or with um, ID. Um, you can set the ID as a as um, yeah not hook as. Um, uh, to to, to uh, mark the, the sidebar you want to set. Mm. And if you do it in German, then it has to be another ID uh, than in English. But I don't know why it doesn't get this. Because when I put the sidebar in the English side, then it's in. And if I go then to the German page, then it's out. There's the normal sidebar. And if I change the German again, then it's out in the English. That's so probably uh, overwriting the same value again, yeah? Mm? I think so. Mm. What, you, what you told us, I think that's the problem. Mm. Overwriting the ID or something like that. Mm. Because normally you have to, to give um, uh, unique names, mm. and they're all unique names, because if that is a, a Deutsch sidebar, it's different from English sidebar. Or, um, but it doesn't work. Mm. That's uh, one thing if you want to store, for example, uh, user descriptions, um, custom values for the users, um, always in include in, in keys, so user meta keys or, or uh, yeah, the site ID. So to, pre to prevent overwriting these, these things. I don't, I, I, I remember that we had uh, support problems in, in multi, multilingual WordPress uh, with, with, with such a sidebar plugin, um, but I don't know yet now what, what goes wrong exactly. It's too long. 
since yeah, we had that, that, that means that there is no no id as a variable there's an id as a, a, a string and this could be overwritten yeah but i had to look at the code to to tell what it is yeah, so but you gave me some um, advice how, how i should look for in this plugin but i i, I don't want to change the plugin then i don't use it mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the developer has probably not uh, tested it on Mati's side. Yeah, but no, yeah, he has tested it because there's in the uh, support uh, um, side there's uh, um, advice that it doesn't work on Mati's Oh. <laughs> 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 and that, uh, that's something when you see that uh, that's never necessary. Everything can run on Mati's side. Uh, you just yeah, I have, have to change the code sometimes a little bit and yeah, I, have, have to become a better developer. Yeah. Um. <laughs> I never thought that this could be possible because if I set those sidebars uh, after my, an, an ID, then uh, it's a unique ID. So it, it can't be overwritten. Depends on where it's stored. Yeah. Anyone else? So you've, uh, I wanted to note that you've seen my problem <laughs> with the last one with multi-site, with row write. You mentioned it as uh, that row write rules get, don't get changed if you switch mm -hmm. to site. And like from practical experience why this is very important, if you switch to a different site and you call flush row write rules, if anything at all is different in settings, like if your like, permanent base is different, then it is going to flush rules to the rules of the wrong site. So it is very dangerous combination to switch mm. between sites and to make any changes at all to row mm. rules. Don't do do one or another, but don't do both at the same time. But but you you need. That's it. But uh, you need. This to. is a problem. Yeah. You need you need if if you want to link to other sites, you you need the the uh, correct links. Or you build, uh, then this is what we have as a workaround in Multilingual Press. If it's, it doesn't work at all, uh, you can still use um, dynam dynamic links, uh, so with, with query parameters uh, to link to custom post types. <coughs> this will fail with uh, localized endpoints like uh, WooCommerce has. This is, there's no solution. But it's just access. <coughs> but if you need to write the rules, this is something. Something. Yeah. This is really. Yeah. That's. It's, it's this is this really terrible. Yeah, right. Is it not possible to, to ask for the the, the, the block? You, you can ask for the block, but uh, uh, an endpoint is a special type of permalink. It's like uh, a virtual subdirectory, and. Uh, it is created in a very odd way. Like uh, the, the REST API, I don't know who of you was in the talk about the REST API. Uh, for example, it runs on a custom endpoint, and if you lo localize, uh, translate this endpoint, uh, yeah, you are in a mess. Uh, this, uh, you, you, you can't ac access uh, the translated endpoint from other sites because. Uh, you have no access to translations and you can't load all translation files again because this is really expensive uh, and you have don't have a really good access to the other side's uh, permalink rewrite rules um, and you need in theory you need both and you need both fast and that's something WordPress can't do so um, uh, passive multi-site code is always possible. So when a uh, plugin developer like, says, uh, yeah, it doesn't work in multi-site, this is wrong. Um, uh, but active, active uh, multi-site compatible code, so when you really try to do something with specific multi-site uh, features, there are many things where you run into WordPress very Mm -hmm. let's say outdated code style uh, with global variables or uh, procedural code where 
functions return a different value depending on the order of calling. And this is something you can change. So you will run into, into dead ends sooner or later. But the, the experience, the things that you learn, you have always to look at the general principle. What exactly is stopping me here? So of course, it's always this uh, specific code, but it's really this is what, what you make the better developer do to say, what does in general happen here? How can I avoid this in my code? So when someone else wants to work with my code, uh, how can I do it better? And um, this, is, uh, this is something where I think multi-site, working with multi-site and writing for multi-site is uh, a really good thing. It's not obvious a joy, but um, yeah, everything has its, has its price. How long? <laughs> Are we done yet? That means I have a theme for, for one block and another theme for the other block, and then the theme is only for this block. This is default. This, yeah. Yeah. But can yeah. I can I keep in this block to have um, plugins that work only in this block? Yeah. And in this yeah. Block? You you, you can you can activate plugins uh, per block or site or per network, and uh, if you. Uh, Activate a plugin. This is really strange. If you activate a plugin per network, uh, then you can't activate it per site. Yeah, okay. The other way around works. Yeah. This is uh, really odd. You can activate a plugin per site, then go to the network administration screen, plugins, and activate it per network. Then you might think it runs twice. It doesn't. Uh, but that's uh, really odd when you are going to deactivate because this is something you have to do twice too. Um, in general, some plugins shouldn't be activated per network. That's why I showed this code earlier. Here, for example, WooCommerce uh, sets on installation its own tables. The tables are site specific. Uh, so when you activate uh, WooCommerce as a network plugin, then you get uh, its tables for the main site because we are always in the context of one site on the network administration screen. It's the main site. Then you go to uh, your second subsite. <coughs> WooCommerce is active, but its database tables aren't there. Of course not. It, it can't uh, run through the whole network and install its, its database everywhere because this network could be 10,000 sites. And no, you don't want that. Um, this is um, something you, you have, you have in, in your plugin code when you know I need custom database tables. And these tables have to be per site then make a network activation impossible by re registering an activation hook. And if you set this for a plugin, then it only works in the site itself, yeah. in, the, in the block itself. So then you can avoid that it... Uh, <coughs> um, yeah. Maybe, that's that not necessarily. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes plugins um, collide with themselves if they are active on two sides. You have to test this. Are we done? We are done. Thank you for your patience.